Greetings, Church, Pastor John Achuasen here again, and we're back at it. We are indeed uh, continuing where we left off with uh, from our last installment on marriage. If you can remember, we spoke about, about being a daily support to your spouse. And then we were we considered our first point about how, how can how can how can you support how can you be the, how can you perhaps even be the greatest support to your spouse? And we spoke about speaking in love. And remember we said words carry a lot of weight. Um, and we said when we speak to others we can either delight or depress. Can you remember that? We said we can we can compliment or we can condemn. We said we can help or we can harm. And uh, so I pray, and this be my prayer, that you've been perhaps really diligently seeking God on your words. And so before we continue today, let's open up with a word of prayer and let's see God's face, shall we? Father, we thank you, Lord, that we have your wonderful word that goes before us. Father, we pray, Holy Spirit, as we welcome you, that your word would indeed set us free and free indeed. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. And so in our last installment, I could have used this piece of scripture, but I think I'll use it right now. Colossians chapter 4 and verse 6. Colossians chapter 4 and verse 6. And it reads as follows in the New King James Version. Let your speech always be with grace. Seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer each other. That you may know how you ought to answer each other. Our next piece of script is 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 11. 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 11. Therefore, comfort each other and edify one another, just as you also are doing. See, our second point is that we've got to champion each other's dreams, church. Everyone has dreams and desires. Everyone. And I want to tell you, this may come as a shock to you today, this includes your spouse. Some dreams now appear that they are attainable and within reach. Others might seem way beyond any, any possible abilities that that we might have, or that we feel a spouse might have. And as we've mentioned before, this world can be ugly. Right, church? This world can be ugly. And people can say and do things to, to just squash our dreams, to squish them, if you will. Because it just seems to me a lot of times people just love, in breaking someone else down, they feel better about themselves. Which, of course, is just a lie from the pit of hell. I just want to spend some time asking your spouse what their dreams and desires are. And also let them know you are definitely willing to help them. Sometimes your spouse's dreams will inconvenience you. But I want to tell you, this is an amazing opportunity to show them how much you support them, and that you are willing to walk with them to achieve their dreams. That you will be their champion. That you indeed will be their champion. As Romans 12, 15 tells us, Romans 12, 15, Rejoice with those who rejoice, and weep with those who weep. And so go and, go and ask your spouse, church, won't you? What are your dreams? And see what God can do. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, that we can trust you. And you alone, Father God. Father, without you, we truly can just be, be broken individuals. And Father, we do pray that as we, as we touch on, on a final point tomorrow about displaying empathy, that you will go before, that you receive the glory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, church, God bless you. God keep you. God turn his face toward you and grant you his glorious, glorious peace.